right? You are energized. You are absolutely energized and ready to learn. So a safe classroom environment must ensure the child is ready to learn. And some of the many things we do will be team building. For the last few years, just like you are interested in making sure your students learn, the Tibetan Buddhist monks in Himachal Pradesh have been calling us every year. They say we have 600 novice monks. But it's so difficult to hold their attention. The professor monk, the Kempo, is there teaching them. But the monks sitting down are always looking at, you know what? Either a Samsung or a Nokia. Actually, they say Nokia, no value, iPhone. So, they say, right? They wanted Mala and I to take, take them through engagement. And engagement always starts with building rapport. We are friends. So just watch how Mala got them building teams. So. They said religion is a solitary job. And it was the first time in the last few years they have gotten to know each other. And they got to know their names. And learning became more engaged. So we need to make students more engaged. So now I'm asking you the question. How to get students into your brain? How to get glucose to your brain? I'm not going to give you the answer. That icon means talk. Right? As a teacher, Sometimes we have great plans and we forget. So what we do, we put icons like that. This is Kagan Cooperative Learning, so that we remember. So that means I'm going to ask you to talk to each other and give me an answer. Right? It's good if we just turn around and talk to more people. So how to get glucose to our brain? Talk to each other. Okay, now I also put all my lesson tips on the PowerPoint. I put there most colorful. Most colorful means in your group, I need you to pick up the most colorful person to give the answer. Okay, choose the most colorful person in your group. Cool. Give me a high five. Okay. The most colorful person, will you take off? Take off means don't take off clothes. Stand up. Most colorful person, come on, stand up. Okay. I have so many students. So I want all the... Can I sit down? I want all the males to sit down. Okay? This is the way when too many students stand up, I can eliminate randomly. So I have three women and I'm going to ask them. If I just want two answers, I will say, those without glasses sit down, but you're going to stand. Oh, she's so happy to sit down. <laughs> okay, the two ladies with glasses, give me an answer. How do we get glucose into the brain? Exercise, another word is, okay, cool. Being happy, perfect, different answers, same meanings. Please touch down, touch down and sit down. But before that, shall we give them an American cheer? This cheer looks like this. They were, it was a fantastic answer. Hands like this. Fan. Text. 
tick, 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 like the clock. So let's look at them. Two ladies, can you stand up? Including the other lady who wear glasses. Can you please stand up? Right? The rest of you, look at them and give them a fantastic cheer. One, two, three. Fantastic. Tick, 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 tick. Thank you. Touch down. Laughter. Laughter actually brings a lot of glucose to the brain. So the answer will be movement. The answer will be emotions. Even if you cane the child, it's emotion. They never forget. Remember, Papa, Mama, cane you, you never forget. Emotions. Also, people don't forget. And the last one, F. What do you think it is? Four-letter word. What is it? Fuel. What is fuel? Food. You'll have it after I finish. So, movement. And someone said blood. Yes, it's the blood that carries the glucose to the brain. So when you move, smile. The glucose is brought to the brain so that the child can think. So, stand up, hand up, pair up. It's a Kagan strategy where you get students to meet. I could use it to say, what are the seven colors of the rainbow? Think. Stand up, hand up, pair up, share. When students share, they remember better. So, this is what we are doing in Singapore. We bring in positive classroom climate. And that's only possible if the environment is safe. It's caring. So teachers, we will never be replaced as long as we are caring. And caring comes with good teaching. All right? So what is Singapore's response to reducing stress? Okay? Our response is to build first safe school, safe learning experiences, in the class. Now, this is the Singapore teaching practice. Singapore teaching practice is like this. I'm doing, right? It's positive classroom climate. That is the heart. Then, teacher needs to prepare. And then, teacher, lesson enactment means, right? Lesson enactment means teach well, and then assessment and feedback, Mala will do. So, there you are. Establishing interaction and rapport. That's what I did with you. You got to know each other. If you make mistakes, you won't laugh at them. You laugh with them. All right? Setting expectations, I said quiet signal. I say, who can give me an answer? When I was teaching in Russia, when the teacher asked questions, students are like that, chow, 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 all want to give an answer. And when the teacher chooses them, they get brokenhearted. So here, right, we use random methods. I will say the tallest, oh no, tallest is not good, it's uh, sensitive because I'm not tall, right? You can say the most colorful. The longest hair, right? The hand, the person with the biggest palm, stand up. So you can choose at random. Next, as a teacher, you have to decide on interesting uh, instructional strategies. All in all, the reason is we want collaborative learning. Students are interested and there is learner engagement. I want you to watch this Singapore teaching practice. video That's a teacher there There are two mobile phone plans Which plan should I choose? Plan A costs $30 each month, comes with 2GB of mobile data. 
Plan B costs forty dollars each month with three gig. So which route should I take? The one with fewer stops? Now, what information can I get from this? It tells me that bus thirty four is seventeen stops away from Tupaio Central. Let me clarify my task and the information I have. I know that the bread costs one fifty. I handed you a ten dollar note. So how much change should I expect to receive? I should receive the amount I paid minus the cost of the bread. Ten dollars. Class, as we go through this task, I'm going to think aloud step by step. So listen carefully. First, I need to understand this mathematics task. Next, I need to find out how much orange juice Linda has. So how can this model help? It shows me that. That's the model method. Now it's your turn, so work in pairs on question two and think aloud as you do so. But how do I do it? Mm, I think I'll use a model. I will draw for John first since I know how much sweets he has. So the will have a each longer other. bar with the with the the middle, it will help us identify that John has 442 sweets. Students are engaged, sharing, learning. The young teacher again. Modeling thinking aloud. It's all in the think internet. Of a piece of paper you can and find divide it into three columns. The three components of the KWL help students to integrate the concept into their existing schema. I have some information I've gathered from the internet. I'm going to demonstrate how we can use this information. I'm introducing a visual organiser in my English lesson to teach my students how to classify information they have gathered. Today we will learn about the legacies of the ancient civilizations. In your groups, I want you to discuss the advantages. This is empowering learning. It's still slanting. It's not exactly. You need to keep testing it. move on fast as time beckons me to do so, right? So, when we engage our students, the most important thing is to understand their social relationship feelings, their emotional needs before we talk about the brain. Having said that, I need to tell you stress. Stress shrinks brain network, right? So when the child is stressed, you can see the neurons shrinking. So there is no connection, no learning. And this happens when there is fear, when we criticize a child, and when this happens, cortisol. It's a hormone that thinking. Some of you would remember you had during an exam. So, look at this. The ordinary doctor. The ordinary neurologist for a CT scan, right? They have made it friendly and look how a new CT scan machine looks like. Wow. Even the dying old man says, I want to go into that, right? So if doctors can make medical equipment so friendly, come on, we are teachers. We can make the kittens in our class 
look like lions. That's the power of a teacher. Right? So that's why it is so important to have to build self-esteem of the child. Don't scold them, teach them. So, I'll finish in five minutes. At the beginning of the lesson, I love four-letter words. Four-letter words are powerful. At the beginning of the lesson, you got to hook the learning. During the lesson, you got to hold the attention. At the end of the learning, you got to lock in the content. So, quickly. We need to engage students. Let me ask you. When you say engagement, different people have different opinions. And that's why classroom observations become quarrelsome. Why? Because they have different meanings for engagement. Let me ask you. Just work with your neighbor beside you or behind you and say, students who are engaged exhibit three characters. What is it to their work? What is it despite challenge? And what is it they accomplish? Tell each other. Okay, since I gave you a chance to try, let me tell you. If you got the answer correct, you need to say, I got it. If the answer is wrong, you said, it's okay, I learn now. The answer would be, whether there's technology or not, the teacher will still teach. So, if you got the answer correct, I, said, I want you to say, I got it. If the answer is wrong, so what? Now I know. And the answer is, there you are. When a child is engaged, he's attracted to the work. When the child faces challenges and stress, he will persist. The Singaporean child is trained to have that restraint. And they have a lot of joy. Let me bring three classrooms from Singapore to you now. Attracted to their work. When you give comprehension, written work, solo, it's frightening. In class, you don't need tests every minute. So let them enjoy the exercise. You see students here? <laughs> Each child, when the teacher asks a question, each child on his part of the paper writes the answer. At the end, right, they decide what they think is the model answer. So this is called placement consensus. And then finally, they put the main answers in the center, and at the end, they are ready to do comprehension. Let me show you just one more, right? When there is a lot of stress, these are six-year-old, seven-year-old students. You need to teach them focus. Watch them. We ask them to use a pair of chopsticks to move, to separate the different buttons, because this is teaching them focus, executive function, learning to be resilient. So these boys were a little better. And they're not boys, so they are. Look at the girls. The girls tend to be more dexterous with their fingers. Whatever it is, we teach them focus. And the last one. This is a book about a child who is ashamed of the skin she's born in. The skin, she's, she's ashamed. It's a story. And after they've read the story, students give personal response. And see, this is differentiated instruction for interest. So you can do anything you like to answer the question. Watch them. Very honest. These are discussing. The group behind is going to end it out. These girls and boys are doing a placard advertisement that inner beauty is more important. And this girl is writing a letter. Very honest. She's 
writing a letter to say, dear friend, it's okay, it's not the skin, it's only skin deep, right? So they get to learn to express themselves in many ways. So teaching, I want to tell you, is the only profession in the world, you and I, we are the one who have the daily job of rewiring brains. We are brain workers. Every day we turn brains. Having said that, finally, you need to get them to talk. And when you want them to talk, watch my lesson 15 years ago. I look like that, not pretty, pretty big. But I think I'm passable. 15 years ago, when I get my girls to do differentiated instruction with multiple intelligences. Many years ago. The whole body can learn. Muscle has memory. They learn with physical movements, kinesthetic movements. I'm teaching them the water cycle. To go and learn, to learn the points. You must make sure they read their textbook and they share. Finally, group activity to reinforce the learning. Some girls like to draw. And after they draw, they teach each other. There you are. Some girls like to make things with clay and plastic. It costs very little money. And after that, they go around and teach each other about the water cycle. Finally, these girls love drama. That's the river in the end. All action in class need to be put on pen and paper. After every fun lesson, engaging lesson, joy of learning in the lesson, you still have to test them. We cannot run away from testing. So they have 10 minutes to complete a 10 mark paper. This is an N level GCO paper and at the end of it, the girls feel happy that they can answer the question. So, right, we need to understand how the brain works. Interactions make people remember, right? And you know something when you teach? Within 10 minutes, within 20 minutes, the first 10 minutes is forgotten. That's why you need to stop and let them share. So you have to empty the working memory every 10 minutes. So you teach for 10 minutes and then you stop. Stop so that they can talk, do something, move. So that they can process. So the wisdom is this. If you want students to remember your lessons, you can only do two things. No child can multitask. Either they pay attention to you or they process. No child can pay attention and, protest, uh, and process. Remember that. So, no child can multitask. Every now and then stop because the child needs glucose. And how do they get glucose? Ask a question. What did I tell you the last 10 minutes? Think. Talk to somebody. One minute, enough. That's all. Then go back to teach. Break your lessons, right? And I want to tell you this, and I want you to whisper in a while. Are you ready? Too much, too fast, won't last. Ready, go. Too much, too much, too fast, won't last. So don't teach too much, my dear friends. And remember the Mahatma. Right? Dr. Bharati started with that, said a lot about it. The future depends on what we do in the present. And the best way to predict the future is to create it. It is in your hands and my hands. Till we meet again. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Ma'am Jaya. Very entertaining and very meaningful in a very nice way. Thank you. 
I would request Professor Yeo to also come up on the stage so we can see the two wonderful speakers for the morning today, right there in front, ma'am, if you would just step over into the main zone so people can connect with you and, uh, and see you a little bit more. All right, so learning in safe in classrooms. I think all of us are very much tuned to this way of thinking. Uh, a lot of our classrooms, of course, sometimes being large, lose the focus and very often have children that are inattentive. So my takeaway from here would be that we need to have smaller classrooms yep. in ter terms of lesser children in a given classroom. That's what my takeaway from this is because in order to be effective, one would have to work with smaller groups of people. So that would be one of the takeaways. Nonetheless, of course, everything that you have said here about the glucose, how we should have that energy come back to the children from time to time, very important because very often uh, you see children slumped over onto their desks by the last period mm. because they're not getting enough energy. Um, so now a lot of us will understand that it's also a physiological need yes. uh, than just a mental need. So I believe that uh, what ma'am has come up with regarding retention as well is that retention and processing at the same time is not possible. possible. It is just not possible. So you can't have music and learning. Not possible. Uh, yeah, well, that is debatable because a lot of math children, be, I Alpha. believe, do Alpha with... Alpha music, yes. Yeah. I believe that they are able to do that. Alpha. Um, has uh, professor, is Professor Yo here? All right. No all problem. Right. No problem. No problem at all. All right. So then, uh, very quickly, we are going to sum up with uh, Ma'am Jaya, which is um, basically the interesting part is that the DNA in our body does not determine in any way how much we are going to learn or how intellectual we are. It's going to be the teaching environment and the school environment that is going to take us there. So that's a very interesting thought to understand. Um, I would like to bring forward people who want to ask any questions of Ms. Jaya. So is anybody interested to ask a question? Yes, sir. May we have a mic there, please? We are actually here for three days, and I'm completely unemployed. <laughs> Ma'am, so a gentleman has to ask you a question. You can to ask a question. No, no, he's okay, right no here. Problem. He's right here. Hmm. Sir. You go, Malak. Jaya, that's qu that question is for you. Yes. Jaya, ma'am, you started your talk that DNA modifies, DNA modification. So, and as you said, intelligence is malleable. We, we keep on building the power to learn, but those are the acquired traits through a lifetime. Intelligence not modified, it's increased, it's enhanced by different things you teach. Yeah, so can, can it modify the DNA structure? Can it add on? There are new in genome studies where you can actually modify. Yeah, genome is DNA. Again a right? different But for thing. the child, you and I, or ordinary human beings. Yes. What can we do in class? Teach the way the child can learn, yeah. such that they become more smart. You will be the most happiest person when your students improve in class, and you can do it. You don't need science, you don't need IT, you don't need anything. You just need yourself and a good heart. And that's what I want to give you, <laughs> DNA enhancement. Y yes, ma'am. One more question, please. When you started saying about the neuroscience, mm -hmm. the neural networks, as you said about the cortisol mm -hmm. hormone, mm -hmm. they shrink. Mm. The hormone, the pathways prune, they mm. cut away. Mm. So if oxytocin, the love hormones, the positive emotions, can they remake, can they regenerate those connections back again? Is it possible? Okay, brain science. Put your hands out like this. These are brain cells. These are the dendrites. This is the body. Right? So when you teach in a fun way, there are connections. And at the science synapse, the message goes. Now I'm talking to Mr. So-and-so. He's asking me a connection. Search the brain for the answer. That's how it happens. 
But if he asks me a question, I cannot answer and I don't want to tell a lie. And then they are looking at me, huh? She's so stupid. I feel stressed straight away. This ability to think will shrink. So the connection is broken. If the connection is broken, you don't get water, you don't get flowers. That's all. I mean, can all right, be, we can have one more question. Actually, I wasn't content. So I'll let other people also ask I'm a couple around. of questions. I'm here. Okay, fine. Thank you. Right. Yes, please. Good afternoon, ma'am. Yes, good afternoon. My question to you is that in Indian schooling system, Indian education system, teachers are generally very hard pressed to complete the syllabus. We have NCRT books, which have number of chapters, and the whole syllabus has to be complete because parents feel satisfied when the syllabus is complete. Okay, look at me. I'll give you the answer. I always tell the teachers, why can't you let them talk for one minute? Why can't you let them draw? They will say, no time. No time? No time for what? Their famous words will be, no time to cover the syllabus. Is your job to cover the syllabus or is your job to uncover it? What's your job? Uncover syllabus or cover syllabus? <laughs> uncover. So, all you need is, okay, now this is business talk. Call me. I will teach you methods. One minute only. Teach 10 minutes. Stop. One minute. There are many strategies in two minutes or one minute where the child processes. When they process, they don't forget. Then continue teaching. You cannot teach and teach and teach for 30 minutes because the bottom will grow roots. Children love to move. They love to talk. So the methods, one minute after 10 minutes. It's called the 10 to principle. Call me. Thank you very much. That's all for this session. Professor, can you please come up onto the center of the stage? And ma'am, can you please go back up again? Sure. And uh, both, uh, both viewpoints, though a little separate from each other, are extremely, extremely important in today's teaching. Um, I personally feel that technology is the way forward mm -hmm. uh, in schools. And uh, where I am uh, the principal, um, we already have all our assessments through technology. Um, we do uh, all our online tests. Our tests are uh, through online and stuff like that. So we're already going in that direction. Because I very, very strongly feel these children that are now going to go out there are all going to be having online tests. And everything is going to become very, very um, technical in that way. Nonetheless, the human touch and the human values are still required. So therefore, in a classroom, you need to encourage, you need to empower, you need for children to feel special, that they are there and you are there for them. Or You're else, not simply a teacher. Or else, Dr. Maha, this mother, they, yeah. will, do, they will flick you. Yes, absolutely. You know, no. I so the human, flick, the human flick. touch is definitely going to be so. there. We for time immemorial. So thank you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure meeting up with you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank can we so please much. have a round of applause for our wonderful speakers as we go on to Ms. Bhaskar now for our next session. Thank you so much. Pleasure meeting you.